Welcome to the Victoria Rumble Room, an island show that likes to shine its lens on issues on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada, around the world. I'm Robin Adair and across town, my co-host with the most, the Croatian sensation, the great Maldini, John Jurisic. And Johnny, so much going on. So much, Robin. Uh, generally, it used to be in the middle of summer. You know, middle of summer, relaxing. Now, chocker block full of news by the minute. Um, and uh, most certainly one of the biggest uh, challenges that have overcome us these last numerous summers have these been have been these fires, you know, and, and, and how dry it is on the island. And we've had fires that have disrupted traffic on the central island and caused a lot of headaches and concerns all over the island. Nothing, however, as serious at what, as what's been going on in the Okanagan. Some areas of Osoyoos had to be evacuated as the Eagle Bluff wildfire burns and destroys nearby. I love that city, I, I, our town. I just love it. It's so sad to see what's going on. Osoyoos is one of the hottest, driest places in the country, which makes the wine they grow there delicious. But it's become a tinderbox, Robin. Up in the Okanagan Valley in Penticton, the skies are full of smoke. And sadly, this is becoming a common sight in this beautiful region of the province. Global warming is now real. Global warming is now real and very dangerous. No kidding, John. And of course, we've had uh, climate expert Dr. Andrew Weaver from UVic on the show not too long ago telling us that uh, you can't call it the new normal. There is no new normal. The normal just keeps changing and changing because we get warmer and warmer. We've got to move away from this, this uh, burning of coal and wood and other fuels, uh, especially in places like uh, Asia and in India and in Africa, where the uh, third world countries are using whatever they can for energy, we've got to move to more efficient energy. We need to move ultimately to more hydro, maybe uh, more solar power, wind power, nuclear power. And uh, I think all of these things could get us out of the jam in the longer term, but it's got to happen sooner than later. And uh, John, aside from that, aside from that, we've also uh, been getting all kinds of other uh, interesting information sent our way to the Rumble Room. This in regards to some comments that we made about uh, the Prime Minister. And uh, it was all about uh, his appearance in Ontario not too long ago and the reception he received as we received a, a note from Campbell River from a viewer who took major, major umbrage at the way we reported on that story. You'll recall we were critical of this crowd in Oakville screaming traitor at Justin Trudeau, swearing and pushing. We suggested this kind of behavior only turns mainstream voters off. But if Pierre Polyev and the Tories ever want to form government, they need to distance themselves from this kind of behavior. But uh, Johnny, despite saying all of that, of course, uh, we are left with a letter from Ron, who isn't very happy with us right now. Yeah, Ron from Campbell River certainly isn't, and 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 sure let us have it on our very busy Facebook uh, site, and uh, and 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 comments. Ron was pretty fired up when he wrote this. We wonder what you enablers are thinking when you expect people to sit on their hands and endure the lies of Trudeau. I know jurisics brackets. That's me. Childish mugging for the camera bothers me more. Well, Robin, I'm not exactly sure what mugging for the camera means. Is, is this, it? Is it? you know, anyway, Ron, maybe you can tell us what mugging for the camera means. Ron goes on to write, you both just said, oh, well, I guess we were wrong about COVID mandates. Let's move on. It's okay for outrage against a tyrant. Also stop with the Trump false flag bs it's as bad as the cbc well ron unlike the cbc we're giving you your say and please notice i'm not mugging for the camera while i'm saying this and just to add here and this is to ron this is to everyone um, i can speak very clearly and i think succinctly that uh, neither you john or myself have ever said that we felt the COVID mandates were wrong 
when that pandemic first broke out, I think we were all very concerned when we saw these reports of widespread death and widespread illness. And we were demanding they do something about bringing in vaccinations. And I can't say we were particularly upset that there were mandates to make people act in a more responsible way around the pandemic. And uh, again, we have no problems now that the pandemic has apparently receded, that the mandate issues can all be removed and that people can be reinstated in their jobs if they so wish to be. But that's a, a long way from calling Justin Trudeau a liar again. I'm not a fan of Justin Trudeau, but an angry mob does nothing to build public support. And so, Johnny, again, uh, let's uh, let's again shift topics. Uh, there's no end of topics to shift to. Robin, let's talk about the reopening of the third floor of the Royal BC Museum. Man, oh man, has this museum been museum redo or museum reconstruction been such a screw up? It's about time they opened the third floor. They closed the Old Town exhibit over a year ago. We were told this was to decolonize the facility and address issues of racism and reconciliation. Well, what a mess this has all been, as I've indicated. Usually by this time of the year, we've had 900,000, nearly a million visits to the Provincial Museum. This year, it's been 200,000, less than a quarter million. Why did it take them a year to fix this and reconstruct the third floor? Why didn't they simply change some of the signage and open the third floor? The NDP has us so much to answer for here. You know, I, I have to say, I think the social engineers have uh, taken hold of the situation and uh, I don't think the public had a lot to say about it. I, I feel there has been an attempt to recreate British Columbia's history and, and I say yes to a very large and very fulsome First Nations exhibit. And if there needs to be more room for more information on the First Nations, I say let it rip. We should have way more to say about our Chinese settlements and the Chinese that came here and helped found this province, along with the South Asian community that has done so much in BC for more than a century. But again, John, as we, as we look at this, we can't be ripping up history along the way and uh, you can't discount a large number of people who happened to come here from Europe and did a lot of good work and a lot of hard work to build the province we live in. That's the way I see it. And I sense, John, it's time to turn the page again. Oh, my God. Again, Robin, again, some sunny news that the economy is bouncing back. You know, stock market is edging up. Uh, quite significantly. Interest rates uh, increasing uh, apparently have come to a stop. So does this mean we're about to enjoy a renewed bull market? Maybe some better times ahead? Man, that's not what we thought about, I don't know, six months ago. Or is the dreaded bear market and a recession still a possibility? Well, we decided to turn to our financial expert, David Schneider, to look in his crystal ball. Let's Zoom him in. And back with us now in the Rumble Room once again, easily our most popular interviewee, <laughs> <laughs> wealth management and financial management guru, David Schneider. How are you? And welcome back. Well, we're doing well. It's a it's a big week for short guys like me with uh, Brian Harmon win winning the Open at Royal Liverpool, so we're very excited, us short Oh, guys. that's fantastic. I noticed that. I noticed that. Hey, hey look, talking about uh, strange times, these are certainly strange economic times, David. Uh, on the one hand, interest rates have been on the rise pretty consistently. A lot of lenders may be in the edge of defaulting, in trouble. Well, at the same time, Wall Street is up. Everyone, you know, is, reports are the economy is just booming and is this a real bull market we're seeing? What's going on, David? Well, it's interesting this week. A lot of people that have been complete bears have turned and been bullish. A couple of people that I listen to a lot, Jim Thorne of Wellington and Tom Lee, have been very bullish. And now the entire street's turning the other way, which I don't like. I prefer it the other way. But uh, no, uh, earnings are, are holding up. And, and remember, the market is looking 12 to 24 months out. They're looking at lower interest rates, earnings hanging in there. So it's been quite resilient, and the Canadian market has been actually doing quite well because uh, our energy and resource sector has caught a bid for a number of reasons that I'll like to talk about in a 
in this uh, in this segment. It's interesting to know, uh, I have heard that one of the reasons Wall Street has really turned around is because of the Magnificent Seven, the yeah. seven leading tech companies, and they're all excited about artificial intelligence, and that's really driving things. These are massive billion-dollar companies, and it's pulling the whole market up. But I've also heard it said that the bear could still come back, and we still could have a mild recession. We're not out of the woods yet. Yeah, I think there was a, a report this past week that showed that back in November, almost 100% of the economists had predicted a recession in 2023. That's not happening right now. And there is thoughts of a, of, of a soft landing. There is more worries that Canada will have maybe more of a hard landing. We're just not as diversified as the United States. And uh, we have some issues because we're extremely debt ridden from a corporate government and personal side. So we'll see if we get through it. But no, it's uh, the markets have been good. And there's a lot of people on holidays right now. There's almost a $5 trillion on the cash on the sidelines right now in the United States. And uh, there's almost thoughts that uh, there's going to be a lot of people that want to catch up. But it's been a good run. And again, uh, it's really been nice to see Canada participate as well. Uh, back in the day, David, as as you know, and, and a few of our uh, million plus listeners know, uh, viewers know, yeah, uh, I was a stockbroker, and uh, I back then I had hair, I was thin, so that was a long time ago, okay? <laughs> a long time ago. But yes. generally speaking, within the portfolios that we managed or were actually expected to manage, banks and utilities were were huge components. They had good dividends; they were solid. They're hurting right now. Yeah, you know, people can't. Yeah pay their loans banks pay the price so what do you think about banks in the financial sector sorry to interrupt you no no problem banks banks in canada always more diversified from a funding base but they were hurt when the u.s banks started getting hit you remember there's etfs in the world funds that have all banks so when those things get sold all the banks get sold whether it's Citibank or royal bank <clears throat> but we're showing that the banks are holding up um margins are are holding up as well. But, um, you know, the nice thing about the Canadian banks is that they have a funding base that's very, very diversified. We don't have the issues like the U.S. banks. Dividends probably won't increase as much. The ones that have been hurt has been the utilities. The utilities are more based on interest rates. And with their interest rates staying up there, they've been hurt more than than the banking sector but uh the area that actually has done extremely well has been the insurance sector because they mm. they don't have lending and they're making very good money on their businesses and that's why you see three of the major insurers in canada hitting new highs this past uh, past couple of weeks i understand the canadians per capita are the most in debt of the entire g7 and that's a that's a worrying <clears throat> trend considering as you said the interest rates keep going up i believe with the the bank rate now is at, at, at over 7%, which means most people are having to borrow at a much higher level than that. That means if you're leveraging a huge debt, people are going to start walking away. At the very least, do you think that the market is now going to level because of interest rates, the housing market, I'm saying? And, and what's going to happen to the housing market down the road because of all this? And what do you think is going to happen to rent? Well, um, th this is a tough one. Um... This past week, Steve Sarasky came out with his piece on on the mortgage market and the rental market and the housing market, and it's getting tough. Um, and and it's it's getting really tough on on the availability of rental. And you know, the two of us, the three of us, could talk about the population explosion we're having in Canada because the housing, the healthcare, the education, the jobs aren't keeping up with all the people that come into Canada. It really is a problem. But you know we're seeing we're seeing all kinds of issues where these rates are having a real impact on homeowners. Just this past few weeks, you hear from friends, neighbors. Did you hear about Joe? Did you hear about you know this family? Their their mortgage has gone from two thousand to four thousand because their mortgage came up, and a lot of people aren't moving because they might not qualify for a new place. So that's why there's not a lot of places on the market. So you add that to international people still coming, Toronto people still coming, Calgary markets really increased. So now they can afford to buy into Victoria. You know, as I keep saying, this peninsula is a pimple on a global standpoint. There's not a lot of properties out there. And uh, that's why you're seeing not a lot of supply. But again, you're seeing the has and has not. There's a lot of people getting hurt. 
uh, not just from an individual lending standpoint, you know, companies too that have borrowed too much. So I think there's still a lot of, some pain, uh, but unfortunately inflation has been sticky. And one of the big issues with inflation is, uh, you know, a lot of people in government keep getting hired <laughs> and they're getting big pay increases. And then on top of that, we got the unfortunate side where food prices don't seem to be helping people as well. So it's sticky here in Canada. And, and that's why there's more of a better feeling in the United States overall with their economy being more diversified and not being as leveraged than, than the Canadian marketplace. Mm. Interesting insight here. And uh, of course, David Schneider's talking about Canada perhaps being able to avoid a recession. The U.S. has just boosted their interest rates again. We have to wait and see whether we get that soft landing. But uh, let's now move over to something else that was on David Schneider's mind, and that is the homelessness crisis in B.C. And of course, it is out of control in Vancouver, Victoria, even other smaller centers like Nanaimo. It's a terrible problem that's growing. Will the government act? Minister Callon sounds like he's prepared to up the aid, and he's appointed Jess Jessica McDonald and Lauren Brownsey, two former deputy ministers, to develop and assist a strategy to go forward. And we've heard from Ian Beatty on this, and Ian Beatty, as you may recall, was the uh, head of the BC Police Victim Services and uh, was on the program just a couple of weeks ago. He uh, wanted to notify us there was an open letter in the Times Colonist, and it uh, laid out a game plan that might be followed that could work. I mean, we got to start trying these things. Uh, this uh, note was written by uh, Julian Daly of Our Place and Nathan Med from the Victoria Conservatory of Music. There were four major points. One, a new intensive outreach program. Two, housing and sheltering options to remove people from the street and from parks and get them into housing. Three, mental illness and addiction services. We've heard this before. Maybe this is real this time. In extreme cases, this needs to be involuntary. And maybe that's the hook. And a support for police and courts to an, actually incarcerate the bad operators, the real criminals. They may be a minority, but they're dangerous and they are in these street communities. And so David Schneider also met with several people in his business community about this issue. He also talked to the police chief, Del Manick, and asked him what he thought should happen going forward. Here are some of his thoughts on crime in Victoria. You have a wide network. You've been around the region for some time and and we hopefully on the VRR, we try to benefit from the reactions from your network yeah. and their reactions uh, from activities and issues uh, in our city. Looks like tourism is booming again. Tech sector yeah. is thriving. We interviewed Dan Gunn uh, recently and, and, and gathered that from his responses. We're emerging from the pandemic in pretty good shape on the island. But, 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 boy, do we still have tent cities, yeah. drugs, and crime, and all of those things increasing. Well, this this is a really important. We, we care so much about our community. We care so much about the people in our community and those that are on, in unfortunate situations. Uh, we all have to have empathy and compassion to try to fix it. The fact is what we're doing is not working. It's not working at all. There is some coincidence that um, the East Hastings situation, when they took down a lot of that, encampment there it's amazing how it grew like crazy in pandora the last seven to ten days yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of chatter you can't confirm it of people just moving here our econ our economy our community does well because of collaboration so if there's one time that need we need to collaborate better is um is now with this situation i am going to encourage people and i'm going to be putting on my linkedin page a story from the globe and mail and it talked about what london england did um, back in the 80s and 90s it had significant issues uh and and still does but they did some measures and what they did is they did collaborate and they found a leader that was the voice of the people the people that are having the issues and that's one thing dell said this morning there's no voice for these people that are going through these terrible situations they don't want to make decisions that are going to get 
all the people upset at Twitter and, and uh, all the social media guys crashing down. And what was said in the Global Mail article I read, and it was written by an academic at UBC, it's maybe time to make some hard decisions. Maybe it's time, yes, to show compassion, but that compassion should also be some tough love with some people that really, it's no, there's no point just putting them into a, a facility and saying, here you go. You put them in a facility, they don't have a choice to leave, and then you help them. You help yeah. them. And yeah. some of those people maybe don't get out for a while because they need to stay there and get helped. And we, we've been reluctant to do that, but all the other models we've been trying are not working. Yeah, Dell would be the first one to say we need secure involuntary care. This is not popular with the politicians. It does lose votes, but it's needed. Um, you know, and the, and the police department, thank God they're around. They're the dealing with the people that are, you know, you'll see them downtown. They're, they're not in good shape. They're violent. No one wants to deal with them. And it's the police officer that has to go there and take lots of risks. So. The reality is this is a regional issue. This is really a provincial. This is a national issue. And um, we have to work together. And when you have all these centers and services all in a very close geographical area, uh, whether it's in Victoria, whether it's in Nanaimo, whether it's in Vancouver, guess what happens? And then you have this Pandora situation. They're all within a block or two or three area. It just doesn't make sense. So they have to be spread out. But this this is significant. So it's good to hear things happening, but, you know, people talk about as a, as a homeless issue. This is really, a, you know, a drug addiction uh, issue that's a mental issue that has to be solved somewhere. And these people, people need real, real help. Well, David Schneider certainly has his hand on the pulse of what a lot of business people and a lot of citizens in Victoria are, are saying or thinking about this current situation in our streets. No one no one wants to cast aspersions on people who are down and out, but no one wants to keep the status quo either. We need to do something to manage this situation, and let's hope the new strategies that are being developed actually work. And on that happy note, John, I guess it's almost time to wrap things up. We certainly could keep talking, couldn't we? There's enough news. But nonetheless, I couldn't agree more with David Schneider that we must show compassion for people living hard on our streets. But you know what? We also have to try to find a solution, a solution that gets them um, adequately housed, adequately assessed, and provides medical attention. Those things are not happening uh, to solve this problem, and we've got to change that. The status quo is not an option. Anyway, we now must close the show for this week. Uh, wanting again to thank that over 1.2 million cumulative viewers who've tuned into the Victoria Rumble Room. We really appreciate your support. Everyone from Victoria all the way up to Campbell River. <laughs> You're fixated Here, on Campbell River today, John. Oh boy, am I ever a loved, beautiful town. Here are the various platforms in which everyone can jump in and hear what we have to say. Of course, the mothership is our Facebook page. Uh, we have a lot of activity on our Twitter page as well as all of these interviews housed on our YouTube page, make sure, please, that you follow us and give a thumbs up to these videos. The view, uh, the speakers really appreciate it too. They really appreciate when we tell them how many people are listening to what they have to say. Uh, we also are on a numerous Facebook news groups, as well as Instagram and TikTok, which is always a fun place to follow. So, Another great show, Robin. Another great show. So many topics that we've covered, and I can't wait for next week. For now, I remain your muggy, yet charming, Croatian sensation, Johnny Juris. And you know, Johnny, I've always thought you had a great mug. I'm Robin Adair, and rumble on. <laughs>